Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. This is just a quick video this time to keep you guys in the loop about a new patch that just came out. There's not too many changes in total, but it has some pretty notable ones for Gujars, Hindustanis, Portuguese, and Poles in particular. To start with the general changes, probably the most noticeable is now you're going to have shared line of sight with your whole team. Basically, everyone gets the Portuguese team bonus. This is going to lead to some changes for Portuguese as well, but we'll get there in a minute. Another general change is that Parthian tactics change from plus 4 to plus 2 for cavalry archers against pikemen, but the heavy cavalry archer anti-spear attack boosted from 2 to 4 to offset that. Altogether, that's a slight improvement to the heavy cavalry archer upgrade in particular, but doesn't change the final numbers if you're fully upgrading your units. Of course, for any civilizations that don't have Parthian tactics but do have heavy cavalry archer, this is a slight buff. The third and final general change is that the Battle Elephant had its cost reduced by 10 food, which I don't see as making a huge deal for that unit, as it's still quite expensive. Now let's move on though to the Civ specific balance changes, starting with the Burmese, who have a single change in that Parthian Tactics now applies to a Rambai. This not only gives them more armor, but also bonus damage against pikes, so it's a pretty notable buff in the late game for that unit in particular. Next up is the Gurjars, who have had a lot of important changes. The first is their mounted bonus change from plus 40% to now a staggered 20, 30, 40 starting in Feudal, which is pretty crazy considering this was initially plus 50%. This is obviously a response to how well they've been doing on open maps against cavalry sieves. The Chakram Thrower also had its own overhaul, with its damage reduced significantly both for the regular and elite, having two lower base attack. At the same time, their pass through damage where they hit units they weren't directly targeting has gone from 50% to 100%, meaning they do their full damage to those units. Keep in mind that their relatively low attack is increased with forging and iron casting at the blacksmith. Now, at first glance, it's not immediately obvious without seeing the numbers if this is a buff or a nerf, especially if you're firing into a large mass of units. It turns out this is largely a nerf, but not in all cases. If you're attacking something with zero base melee armor and equivalent castle age upgrades, then this is a buff as long as you're hitting four or more units with your shot, and a nerf if you're hitting two units or fewer. If your attack passes through three units, meaning your target and then two more, then there's actually no difference after this change. If you add even one melee armor to what you're targeting though, you have to hit six or more for this to be an advantageous change, and with enemies having two or more base armor, this is practically speaking always going to be a nerf. In addition though, the Elite Chakram gains plus one bonus damage against infantry, so against a large group of halberdiers for example with low armor and now taking bonus damage, the Elite Chakram is a little stronger than it was before. Just to be clear though, in most cases, especially against units that have relatively high melee armor, this is going to be a nerf. Labeled as a bug fix, they also mentioned a change to the Shravamsha Rider, which was having some sort of resistance to splash damage that it wasn't supposed to. I'm not exactly sure what the problem was before, but I checked it out and Mangonel still had their shots blocked pretty effectively, so I don't see this as a major change for at least that type of splash damage. Next, we have a very small nerf for the Hindustanis, where their camel attack speed bonus was reduced slightly from 25% to 20%. Moving on, the Incas also had a change that was not mentioned in the patch notes, but it's that their slingers are now affected by thumb ring, making them attack 18% faster after that tech, which is a nice little buff for that unit in particular. One of the biggest changes though was for the Poles, whose stone mining boost was reduced from plus 50% to plus 33% gold generation, meaning you get one gold for every three stone you mine. Generally, I'm not huge on making sieves more generic, but statistically Poles were kind of broken on closed maps, so I do get the motivation for this change. Keep in mind, it's still two thirds of the gold you were previously generating, so it's not like the bonus is taken away entirely. Getting back to the Portuguese, who had their team bonus basically given to everyone for free, their new team bonus is that everyone's technologies on their team research 25% faster, which was previously a 33% faster Civ bonus. I did take an in-depth look at that bonus and overall was not super impressed, and this is actually a weaker version, though it's still an interesting change, as it means everyone on your team has faster techs coming in when you hit a new age, and this is going to be nice for some especially long techs, like Chemistry, Paladin, Heavy Camel, etc. Of course, since that's being taken from an existing bonus, for Portuguese, that's being replaced with their foragers now generating a trickle of wood. It works out to 250 wood in total from your starting berries, which is pretty solid and will be a nice boost for their early game. I could see this being a sneaky good bonus, though not as good as Dravidians getting 200 wood instantly in Feudal, for example, as you usually don't have your berries done until well into Feudal Age. And finally, one last change was for the Vikings, whose warship discount no longer affects transport ships. 
There were a few other small bug fixes mentioned, but I have to say nothing really major. At the end, we do get a bit of a glimpse of what's coming up for 2023 though. The first big thing is Age of Empires 2 being released on console at the end of January. I imagine for most people currently playing the game, that probably doesn't mean that much, but the next DLC, Return to Rome, is then confirmed to be coming shortly after that, though no new details of what exactly it entails, whether it's just an AOE 1 port, or it has something for AOE 2 specifically as well. I'm still optimistic about that, and I have faith that they're going to come up with some good ideas of how to do that, that it doesn't just feel like releasing Age of Empires 1 again. That's all for this one though, and I'm curious to see how this impacts Gujars, Hindustanis, Poles, and Portuguese in particular over the next few months. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.